for those who are familiar with this YouTube channel, uh, this one's a little bit different from the norm. It's that time of year where you don't really want to venture too far. And um, I just thought I'd tackle something um, different today. But I usually put out. I'm in the Darnley Coffee House, uh, the foot of Broad Street in Stirling, and this is a bowl of it's potato, spring onion, and cheddar soup. And it's absolutely delicious. I mean, you know, um, not for the first time have I described the Darnley Coffee House in Stirling as selling the best soup in Scotland. And um, I have no doubt that that is, uh, remains the case and has been the case for many years. Just what you need on a cold winter's day. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at four locations in Stirling from which you can view the Wallace Monument. And if you can get a good view of it, then it's probably also going to be a good place for which to take photographs or film or whatever. Um, so without further ado, let's get to the first location. This is the first of these locations. Most visitors to Stirling will visit Stirling Castle and in walking up the esplanade towards the castle, they're not going to fail to notice that kind of pointy thing behind me. And they'll think, what on earth is that? It's Wallace Monument. To, to be honest, it's going to be pretty hard to get a better uh, view than this. The other three locations are, are every bit as good, but they, they just uh, slightly different angle, slightly different perspective, and certainly on one occasion a, a, a totally different perspective. But uh, you know, you had to, to beat this one. This is the first um, location that I filmed uh, this morning. You know, I, I, not necessarily going to film them in the order that you see them, but this is early in the day. The sun's very, very low, and at the moment, both the the monument and the Oakle Hills in the background are in, in shadow, but within a couple of minutes the sun could be highlighting any one of those uh, features. So take your shot and uh, then we'll head on to the next location. Well, this is location number two on Gowan Hill, just below the castle. Uh, it's that close to the castle that in many ways it's not such a different image from the ones taken from the castle esplanade, but it is from a slightly different angle. Um, I, I was going to shoot it beside some cannons. There are cannons here uh, on Gowan Hill, plural of cannons. Sorry, plural of cannon. I think it's just cannon, isn't it? There's not an S. Anyway, I've lost a cannon or cannons. Either somebody's stolen them or I'm just in the wrong spot. But either, either way, we're in a nice kind of high spot right at the front of the hill here with stunning views of the Wallace Monument. And again, they, they look a bit kind of um, dark in shadow with no sunlight illuminating any parts of the monument or the hills behind them. Um, I, I, I think I touched on earlier, I, I'm perhaps using this video as an excuse to try out uh, the video editing software DaVinci Resolve, the free version. Uh, it's so good that I, I can well imagine uh, that I'll upgrade to the paid version. Um, I've just had any number of issues with software I've been using before, uh, in particular 
uh, in conjunction with my new computer. It's just been a nightmare. So this, this is uh, DaVinci Resolve looks uh, pretty stunning, you know. And um, using that software, you can do all sorts of things with the, the colour to make, uh, just fiddle about to make the image look better. I mean, in some ways, you're not so much making the image that you take look better. You, you, you're kind of enhancing it to make it look, on the video, more like what it was like in real life. Because sometimes your camera doesn't capture what's actually there from a colour point of view. Um, and I certainly, in previous uh, vid video editing software, I would use a bit of saturation, a bit of contrast to try and... Uh, make the image look better. With DaVinci Resolve you've got a whole range of different uh, things that you can do from a colour perspective. Uh, I think DaVinci Resolve, or the company that makes that, is pretty famed for its kind of colour um, tweaking software, if that's the phrase. Um, and at the end of the day, I'll show you an image just now taken from here that I've taken of the Wallace Monument with the Oakle Hills in the background and with DaVinci Resolve I can make this image look like this and that can't be a bad thing so onwards to the, the next um, location which is uh, down below near the, the old bridge Well, this is location number three. Just uh, quite close to the, the old bridge over the, the River Forth. And the, the, there's, you can kind of move about in this kind of spot here and get any number of uh, different kind of uh, scenes. But one of the issues, depending on which scene you choose, is that there's a kind of tall black lamp standard right at the end of the old bridge. That sort of gets in the way sometimes. Um, it kind of spoils the shot, you might say. Although I th many people probably have software that could remove it. But then you're creating a false image. Do you want to do that? But if you're careful, you can perhaps avoid it, you know, depending on uh, how you go. Um, I think for many people visiting Stirling, they'll visit the castle, as I said earlier on, and then they'll go on some sort of means of transport to the Wallace Monument and they won't come this way, they won't walk between Stirling and the Wallace Monument and they will therefore miss this location and it's a very good location though, you get in the monument as I say and the old bridge of course it's not the old bridge, the one that uh, part of the English army uh, ramped over uh, before William Wallace had the bridge destroyed along with a good portion of the English Army. It's a later bridge, but it's still got some age to it. I've, I've been talking on a number of occasions today about uh, the, the hassles I've had with my new computer and the just technology, the nightmare of trying to do things a different way and what have you. Um, the, the, the main issue with my new computer was that um, it didn't arrive on the day it was expected to arrive. You know, you pay for next day delivery, it doesn't turn up the next day. You know, and that whole day is a wasted day. You're in tenter hooks, you're constantly listening out for the door going or whatever. And okay, you can get your money back, but I, I think legislation should be passed if, whereby there's some sort of automatic uh, compensation for such a scenario. If, you, if you're waiting for something to be delivered a particular day and it's not delivered, there should be automatic compensation. I don't know, nominal £30 a day or whatever. You know, I think we're, Joe Public's getting messed about too much. I don't know whether it's by delivery companies or the companies uh, supplying the, the goods, you know, but it's, it, it's, I think it goes on far too often. Another issue with the computer, once I eventually got it, all my passwords were in a Word document um, that was on an external drive. So that in order for me to read all these passwords, I had to install um, Microsoft Office uh, on the new computer, uh, attach the drive, and so on and so forth. I had, um, you know, I had a Microsoft Office, an old version of it that was going to do. So I'm looking at this new computer, 
were trying to figure out where the CD reader was. And sometimes with kind of newfangled stuff, they've got a way of hiding things. You know, it could take you long enough sometimes to figure out where the on-off button is. They make it all slim and very difficult to figure out where things are. And I'm pressing various bits of this thing. I was hoping something would just slide out. And after a considerable period of time, I realised there wasn't a CD reader on my new computer. It used to be the case when you got a computer, you would get uh, these things would be incorporated into it. You would also get a keyboard and stuff like that. You know, you don't get these things these days. It's just not fair. Anyway, t t take as many shots as you want from here, and we'll move on to location number four. Well, this is uh, the last location, location four. Not sure why I'm saying it like that. It's almost as if I'm introducing a boxing match. And in the red corner, we have location four. And this is a very, very wet field. This is, uh, I think, all flat cars, it's just, it's absolutely so soaking. Um, and also the, the gate I came through there was rusted, solid. I almost didn't get through that gate. Um, I, I'm behind the castle that you can maybe see just over there, and it, just, just off a footpath leading uh, towards Cambus Barn. As a public footpath, that gate should be more accessible than it is. I, I struggled. To, I had to kind of move bits of barbed wire out of the way, so on and so forth. I'll put them back when they go back that way. But I, I think we'll have to let somebody know about that. That should always be easy for people to come and go. Um, and the view of, of the monument from here, this is a, a different sort of angle and so on from the, the other three views. And it's not looking just as stunning as I kind of sort of anticipated, it's simply because it's a little bit dull. If you had a bit of sun over there, it would really pick either the monument or the hills out and make it look a lot better. Nevertheless, it's an interesting shot, perhaps a different shot, and um, you're also getting really stunning views of uh, mountains, Ben Ledy and uh, I'm sure uh, Ben Lomond and so on and so forth, but Ben Vorlich, I think, perhaps, I'm not sure. Um, and they're all snow capped. And with DaVinci Resolve, you know, we can make these, uh, we can make a stunning scene look even more stunning a little bit more vibrant than it looks in, in real life. So that's, that's pretty much it. I'll, I'll head back that way. Um, and uh, that's it, really. Actually, no, I forgot to say. Um, I, I've been talking about DaVinci Resolve, my new computer, so on and so forth. Um, 
it, it's, it's all been a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. My, my old computer, I, I tried DaVinci Resolve video editing software, the free version, but my old computer couldn't handle it. You need quite a hefty uh, GPU and all that kind of stuff. Uh, my new computer can handle it, which is why I'm, I'm using it now. Um, but I, I, even if I wasn't using it, I had issues with my old uh, Magix uh, Movie Maker Platinum 22 or whatever it was. It just, for some reason, there was an incompatibility between that software and my new computer. I was getting green bands in the in the kind of timeline, and also in the, in the final rendered video, there was a big pink splodge right at the beginning. So these are all sort of visual anomalies that indicate perhaps something incompatible in relation to the GPU. And I tried other video editing software. It was Coral, I think, is the maker, and um, I paid for it and. Um, it, could, it didn't accept WAV files. I, when I make music or voiceovers and stuff, the end result's a little file called a, a WAV, W-A-V. And the, the Coral um, editing software, it, it should be accepting WAV files, but it didn't like my WAV files for whatever reason. And I thought, this, this is just a nightmare, you know? Why is technology so complicated? It's pulling your hair out, such sort of stuff, you know? So I then really had no option but to uh, go with uh, the DaVinci Resolve. Although I, I do have the uh, Magix software on my old computer, but the whole reason I got a new computer was because my old one was starting to make noises. It's not going to last much longer. And I quite like playing computer games, you know. Recently playing Far Cry 4. But I, I, after playing about with it for quite a few hours, you know, and kind of enjoying it. I ended up just uh, deleting it. I thought, I can't be doing this. I kept getting attacked by eagles. You know, you try to do stuff and there's eagles attacking you. I thought, I, I just can't be doing with this. Rhinos as well. So I thought, well, deleted. Anyways, I think that's it this time. <laughs> does not do, do this justice. Potato spring onion and cheddar, it's absolutely delicious. Anyway, that was the four locations in Stilling, from which to view the Wallace Monument. I'm not sure if I'll put out another video this year. We're heading towards the end of the year. We'll see, I'm not sure. We'll end with a song. Always good to end with a song. I'm Mary Burns. Take care. As the sun sinks behind the hill, another year has come. Time goes where no one knows, never to return. When autumn leaves are fallen and day turns into night, and I think when comes the snow Will I ever see the light? The darkness 
saps the winter haze when nothing is in view. I look to all horizons, I look to try see through the shadows all around me, hiding colors of the fall, and I wonder if I.